Friday night. We ought to kick it off right. What should we do? A little buffalo, a little whistle pig, 12 year. Ooh, that eagle rare sounds pretty nice. Oh, hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Rustic Anchor Woodworks channel. On today's episode, I'm going to show you how to build these fine and fancy bar shelves for your garage or your home. But guess what? Tonight, it's Friday night. I'm going to take a load off and I'm going to show you how to build these tomorrow. So come back tomorrow and I'll show you how to build these really quick and simple and they look phenomenal. All right, guys, it's Saturday morning. I feel refreshed and rejuvenated. I've had my coffee and I'm ready to get working and show you guys how to build those uh, bar shelves. But before we begin, if you like what you've been watching and you like my other videos, I please ask you to hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all the new videos coming out in the future. And if you like this video, please hit that like button. You're definitely helping this channel grow and I definitely appreciate it. So the materials you guys are gonna need for this project, very few, simple. This is gonna be the most expensive piece. I got this at Home Depot. It is called a gallery rail, rail, excuse me. It's maple and it's 48 inches long. I got a 13 sixteenths uh, by two inch piece of trim with two 45 degree uh, bevels on each side. And there's what that looks like. I have a piece of cut off three quarter inch uh, veneered plywood. I would recommend um, either maple or birch. Oak is not gonna look good with all of its pores against uh, these two pieces. So three quarter inch uh, plywood, maple or bir birch. Then I'm gonna use dark walnut stain, polyurethane in gloss finish. Feel free to use whatever finish you want and some uh, cheapo bristle brushes. So let's jump right in. Every so often I break out this nice tool. It's from Klein. It's a digital angle finder. And basically you put it on your table of your machine, zero it out, and then shift it over to your blade. And it'll give you the exact angle of your blade in reference to your table. So, you know, like I said, I, I just like to make sure my saws are tuned up and running straight and square and at the right angle. So I'll go ahead and shift this over to my table saw and do the same thing since I already have it out. For the base of the shelf, the three quarter inch plywood that you're gonna be using, you need to cut it to 24 inches long and rip it to six inches. This is my WEN 12 gallon dust collector. I have a four inch hose hooked up to a splitter that goes into an inch and a half inch hoses. Uh, a lot of you guys have asked about it, so I thought I'd throw it in here. I like it, it works. It's really small and compact and I'm happy with it. So now we're on to ripping that piece of plywood down to six inches. So here's where things get a little tricky. When you're doing trim like this, you need to put it upside down on your workpiece and then cut it backwards. So upside down and backwards. And then you got to make sure you always put it in the same spot on the fence. If you have fence stops, uh, that's great. If you don't, just get some tape like I'm doing, lay them down, and then you're going to mark it um, on that uh, bottom table there. And that way you can put uh, repeated and repeatable cuts in reference to uh, the same position that you're cutting that trim at. So after you get your tape la laid down, go ahead and put your trim uh, up on your saw. Make sure it is equally and flushly touching the bottom and back fence on both sides of the saw blade, and then go ahead and mark it like I'm doing with a pencil on both sides. That way, every time you take that piece off, and you go to put it back to make another cut, you make sure that bottom trim piece is lined up with that bottom line that you're drawing. It'll be repeatable. All right, let's go ahead and walk through how to do this really slowly. So first, we know that the 
you ripped that plywood to six inches. So the first side piece we're going to do on the right side of that plywood is going to be six inches. And remember, we're going to go upside down and backwards on the workpiece. So that rope looking uh, design is going to, I want that up on the finished product. So I want it down on my saw. And then also, this is the right side, so I want to cut left at 45 degrees. And the little six inch mark is going to go from the shortest portion of the cut. A couple things to remember when doing this besides upside down and backwards, you want to cut really nice and slow through your workpiece. Not too slow where you're going to burn the wood, but slow enough that you're not going to have chip out or uh, tear out. And then when you get all the way through the cut, like any piece, uh, release the trigger and let the blade come to a stop until you lift uh, the saw back up. So here it is, the first right piece. Uh, it's right piece, not when you're looking at it. And uh, fits up really nice. All right, we have one piece of trim cut out. I'm going to take uh, 320 get grit sandpaper, excuse me and uh, just knock down those little hairs that are sticking up, little fibers. Don't go crazy on this. As well as my piece of plywood. All right, so how to attach this trim for the first piece onto that uh, shelf. I'm going to use some wood glue and an 18 gauge uh, brad niller. I'm going to use an inch and a quarter. Every time I use my uh, air tools, I always put a couple drops of uh, air tool oil because they're just so much moisture running in those uh, air lines, especially if you don't have a moisture separator like I don't. Like I said, you can orient this how you want or grab other trim. Uh, I'm going to put this rope looking towards the top. So then the, the area without this uh, nice wood work, I'm going to put towards the bottom. So it shall go like this. To help me out, just because I'm you know one person, I want to make sure it's uh, looking straight. I'm going to go ahead and attach it uh, upside down on the table. So. You don't need a crazy lot of glue when you're doing edge glue ups or anything like this. Before you shoot these pieces in, just make sure you line up the back edge, the front edge where the miter is, and the bottom portion of the shelf to the bottom of the trim. Whatever glue you don't get, it is going to highlight uh, with the stain, so make sure you clean it up as good as you can. So we know we cut this 24 inches long and just for the sake of not wasting any material, I'm going to cut it 24 and an eighth inches long and then walk this side in just so I get it spot on. So back to the miter saw. Again, just remember when you're making your cuts, put your piece upside down and cut it backwards. Draw a little uh, angle line on your material just so you can visually see which way you're gonna you need to cut your blade. Um, so go ahead and measure out 24 and an eighth, cut that out, and we'll take it back to our workpiece. Here's a little tip on using your miter saw. When you're holding your workpiece down on the left side of the blade with your left hand, you're gonna use your right hand to cut the piece down. When you switch over to the right side of the blade, hold your workpiece down with your right hand and cut it with your left hand. That way, your left hand isn't crossing over the blade to the right side of the fence and it might nick you right in the forearm. So it's uncomfortable at first doing it that way, but the more you do it, the more you'll be accustomed to it 
and it'll be a lot safer. All right, I actually got that one right on the money. So, like I said, just lightly knock off those uh, frayed fibers, and this uh, Diablo blade does a phenomenal job. You really don't get much out of it. Set that off. Some glue on this. And a little bit on that trim piece. down and pretty good tight miter what did you think and we're gonna fill in all those holes with some putty but looking really good I'm gonna measure this out should be six inches I'll go ahead and cut that last piece bring it back over and uh, I'll show us shooting it on This trim piece was really nice from right off the shelf. It was straight, it was uniform, it, it was really nice. The issue with these galley pieces are these don't perfectly line up left and right, and sometimes they have a little wave. Um, so if we try to do a 45 degree miter um, to match this, I mean, it's doable. It's just you're gonna, fi you're gonna be fighting um, the top and bottom and the wave, it's a pain in the butt. The ones I built that I showed you at the beginning of this video, I don't even think you noticed uh, that it wasn't 45 degrees. I'm just gonna go ahead and butt them up against each other and then I'm going to uh, put a little groove either with a rat tail file or a Dremel to match the contour uh, of the front of this railing on this side and you won't notice. Um, so. The bottom of this is three quarters of an inch. The width of this trim piece right here is seven eighths. Um, so I want the back of this galley piece to line up with the back edge of that on the inside and it will give us a quarter, I'm sorry, an eighth inch reveal on the front. So I want to maintain that eighth inch reveal all around. Um, so I want to have an eighth inch here and on the other side so an eighth inch plus, plus an eighth inch is a quarter of an inch right so we'll take that off we'll measure how long it is 27 and a quarter I'm going to take off a quarter inch total to account for an eighth it here and an eighth here cut it 27 inches long and then I'll add cut, measure, cut, and add my side uh, galley pieces. So take that over the chop saw, cut that 27 inches. Okay, another thing you wanna do with this, if you flip it upside down, you'll see all the holes where they added those little uh, center posts in. So just make sure you clean all that up, otherwise it won't sit flush on top of uh, your shelf. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over, apply a light coat of uh, glue, center it up, tape it off to hold it in place, and then get my uh, side pieces cut out and attached.
I'm going to go take this over to the chop saw and cut right where I marked it. All right, so I got that piece cut out and I went ahead and lined up and marked the other side. So same process, knock the uh, tear out underneath from those holes that it came from, knock any other uh, tear out, grab some glue, glue it on, tape it down. All right guys, so I'm gonna let this glue set up for at least an hour. In the meantime, while it's drying, I'm gonna grab some of this Minwax uh, Walnut Wood Filler. You can wait till the end to put this on and that's perfectly fine. It wipes off, you don't even gotta sand it. Or you can put it on now, sand it lightly, and then stain it, uh, finish it just like normal. So this, this stuff is pretty good. I, I'll put a link in to the description below. Uh, you can grab it on Amazon. All right, guys, it's been about an hour of this setting up with glue. One thing I did forget to add in the materials section in the beginning of this video is you will need uh, an inch and a half thick by three quarter inch thick by at least 26, 27 inch long uh, piece of board. This just happens to be poplar. It's gonna work out fine because we need to attach this to the wall somehow, right? Um, so basically you need an inch and a half high because if we get our tape measure, we measure from the top of the shelf to the top of the gallery piece, it will be an inch and a half. I know it looks a uh, terrible angle, but it's an inch and a half. All right, so what we're going to do is we're just going to set that on top. Have your pencil ready. So we want to line up where the bottom of this um, mounting board is going to be to the very bottom of this or top of the shelf because it's going to sit on top of it, all right? So a little tricky, not too bad. Line it up. Grab a nice uh, mechanical pencil and you're going to trace each side so we're going to cut this out and then that'll fit in right on top of here we'll glue it shoot it up from the bottom with a narrow crown stapler, let that cure, and uh, this is where we're going to mount it. Excuse me. This is where we're going to mount it to the wall. All right. So I'm going to chop this section off with the uh, miter saw. I'll uh, grab my Japanese pull saw, or flush cut saw, I'm sorry, and, and do these angles or jigsaw, whatever you have at your disposal. I don't have a jigsaw, otherwise I'd use it. Um, if you don't have one of these, they're awesome, cut super thin. Um, I use them for a ton of different things. I'll put a link in the description below. Very cheap, super effective. I like this one with a spline on it, but you can get it without the spline and and uh, kind of bend that blade into tight spots and it, they just work phenomenal. So anyways. Uh, 
All right, guys, I got my edges cut out. Do a quick test fit. They line up with the top on each side and uh, they fit really nice. Don't beat yourself up if you have a little gap over here. It's gonna be high up. Bottles are gonna be covering it. You're not gonna see it. So don't beat yourself up if you see a little gap like I have. Um, so I sanded the top as well and the front. So what I'm going to do before I secure this in place, I'm going to put some mounting holes. I'm going to drill some holes for my mounting hardware. But how, how I'm going to mount this thing, it, if you haven't seen them, they are just a phenomenal tool to keep in your toolbox. They are called toggle bolts. Uh, a lot of companies make them. Uh, this one's called Toggler. This one... Hillman, you know, you can get them at the big box store. I think I got one from Lowe's, one from Home Depot. But basically what they do is, you know, like for instance, this is a 3 16 inch screw size that holds up to 120 pounds in drywall, 620 pounds in block. And you can use them in drywall, plaster, tile, um, cement block. So they're very versatile and super easy to use. So on these 3 16 uh, ones, you drill a half inch hole in uh, your material and then you fold this guy over. You shove that through the hole that you drilled that half inch hole and then uh, push it all the way through and then pull it back and it'll sit like a T in there. And then with this little bushing, you slide it all up into your drywall. So that will, excuse me, that uh, bushing has a hole in it where your hardware is gonna go and it will line up perfectly with um, this little toggle bolt side of it. Um, so basically, it will, this bushing will slide forward and it'll attach like that. These things are super strong. If you have anything of value that you want to hang up and you need something really robust, check those out. And uh, I'll, I'll put them in the description below for you guys. So first thing I'm going to do is uh, throw those things aside. Grab a 7 32nd drill bit. Um, my drill. And I am going to mark out, measure and mark out where my holes are going to be on this supporting bracket. So I'm just going to put two of them. So it's 24 inch distance. So let's just say we'll put them at six inches. Uh, let's go. Yeah, we'll go six inches each side. So you can see I'm putting them at that, uh, that lower end. So we'll mark six inches there. Flip this guy around. Mark six, six inches there. And then I'm going to drop down three quarters of an inch. Um, that'll get me right where I want that toggle bolt. Put a little X there, on that side. A little X there. Got my drill. Imagine trying to drill these holes in why this is already mounted. You can do it from the back, but just in case there's tear out, you could still sand it now before um, putting stain or anything. All right. So, got that. We'll go ahead and get this. Add some glue on all sides of it except the top. bad boy over line it up perfectly with the back and I'm gonna get some clamps and just uh, lightly clamp them in place you don't need to go crazy when you're putting clamps on glue joints 
you don't want to squeeze all of your glue out. I think I did mention it earlier in the video about putting narrow crown staples in it, but you know, I checked my other ones and haven't had any issues, so I'm going to continue with what I've been doing. Next, I'm going to grab my multi-tool with a sanding pad attachment, and I have 120 grit sandpaper on it. And uh, this thing's nice because you could turn it down really slow and get in that gallery railing um, in between those posts and knock down that wood filler and knock down any high edges. So I'm just going to do that on uh, both corners. All right, now to help contour that uh, front gallery rail, where we did a, just a straight cut instead of a miter. There's two ways to do this. You can either get a rat tail file and just hand file it, or you can get like a carbide uh, burr bit and put it on a drill and that'll make life really easy. So just take your time, go slow, and uh, do it until you're happy with it. So I chose to use the uh, carbide bit to get that groove on those edge pieces. Um, just go slow, take your time, and it'll come out nice, I promise. So once you're happy with those edges, go ahead and grab some hand sandpaper, um, 150, 220, um, just nice sandpaper, and go ahead and hand sand any putty marks you have or any spots that you just need to knock down. So you don't have to apply a uh, pre-stain conditioner prior to staining wood. I just think it blends a lot better than if you don't. So totally optional, both come out pretty good. I think just this gives you that little more edge that you're looking for. All right, guys, bear with me. We're getting close to the end, I promise. So this is on to staining. So I'm gonna use dark walnut, but honestly use any color you want cherry looks good um, like an american oak or something like that will look phenomenal too uh, i do recommend using one of these cheap bristle brushes because there's so many nooks and crannies between the um, trim and the gallery railing trying to use a rag to get in a lot of stuff it's not going to work so just use a bristle brush it gets a little messy it flings all over the place so wear some old clothes and uh, protect whatever you don't want ruined um, and also I'll note that when you wipe it off, um, when you wipe the stain off, all that stain is, some of it's going to stay in those little nooks and crannies and it gives it like a highlighted glazing effect. So don't worry too much about trying to get all that stain out where you can't really reach. It gives it a pretty cool look. To apply the clear coat, I'm going to be using this continuous spray hairspray bottle. Uh, if you haven't seen that video out, I put out with my buddy RJ. After this, check it out. It's short. You're going to enjoy it. But basically, just like the stain, all those nooks and crannies from the, uh, the trim and whatnot, when you spray uh, the polyurethane on here, it's going to get into all those nooks and crannies instead of creating bubbles going over it with a brush. Um, so the thing about the sprayer is it creates a nice atomization. And it doesn't have any surging like a normal spray bottle. All right, so for this left hole, we got the half inch drill hold out, uh, drilled out, I'm sorry. Now we're gonna put in this little toggle bolt. So you just wanna flip it down, shove it in the hole, and then pull it back as soon as it clears the uh, drywall. And then with this little bushing, you're gonna hold one in. Slide it in, and you're going to kind of muscle it in the hole. Now you might need to grab a hammer just to tap this guy in there. But once you do, make sure that zip tie piece is pulled all the way taut. And then if you bend it once or twice, it should break right off. So now that should be aligned toggle bolt and you can see it just aligns perfectly. So I got a couple fender washers on the inside of this to spread some of the weight. So I'll go ahead and start this guy. 
guy. Just thread it by hand. All right, once you got a good amount of threads on there and it's, it's not going anywhere, go ahead, grab your hardware for your other side. Line it up in the hole. Washers on that guy too. All right, so just go ahead and line up your hole with your screw, and we're going to drive that on hole. It's nice if you have an extra set of hands to help you with this part. There we have it, we have this thing mounted. Pull this piece of tape off. So the next thing I'm gonna do is put a couple bottles and maybe some glass or something. So stick around. All right guys, we got this thing all wrapped up and hung up on the wall to match the other two shelves that I built a couple months back. But this project was super simple. It took a total of about two hours and really that was just going back and forth filming it. Um, so I hope you guys can try to knock something like this out. You know, if you want a longer shelf, make it longer. If you want it to stick out further, you know, just change the dimensions a little bit. The, uh, the concept is exactly the same. So please, if you liked this video, please hit that like button. Do me a favor and subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for the next video.